In this video we'll take a look at the array collection. I would strongly encourage you to take a look at the previous video, 2030, about uh, introduction to collections. Without further ado, let's dive right in. So I've created a Visual Basic console application called Array VB. I'm going to paste some code in to create a single dimension array and show you some things that you can do just with singly dimensioned arrays. Uh, to create a single dimension array, I use the dim and I the name of the array, the size of the array, and then its type. So here, this says that I'm going to create five elements within my array, and then here I have assigned each of the elements to a particular value. Now I also make a note below that there's another way to do this, to dim AR single five as integer, and then use the equal sign, and then use the curly braces open and the curly braces closed, and put the, uh, the actual values you want between those curly braces. However, as I make a note of here, you rarely will be able to use this syntax because you don't always know um, at design time what those values should be that will belong in the array, but I wanted you to be aware of that. And the next thing we'll do is paste some more code in here that will highlight some of the things that you can do with singly dimensioned arrays. For example, uh, you can use the index of which means you want to find the occurrence of a given item within your array or find the last index of, find the last occurrence of the item within the array. Also we'll highlight how to use the get lower bound and also the length. So what we'll do is find the index of uh, the item that has 12 in it. So I will use an index of method of our array, so ARR single dot index of, I'm going to pass in the array itself, I'm going to pass in the number 12, which is what I'm trying to find, and then the next property is, here, let's find our, yes, the start index. So we want to start at zero, but we're not sure always what the, um, the first value of our array will be, so I use this get lower bound function and what I do is I pass in which dimension. In this case, since it's a single dimension array, I've only got one dimension, so I passed in zero. And then, on the next line, we also have uh, how long should we search for it. So the next item of the index of is the count. And I want to look for every item in the array for the number 12. So I use AR single dot length. Length gives me the number of items that are within uh, my collection. So then I'll print out the result of this. You see two string of everything that we find here. So the find of index 12 comes out to this value. And then we also do something similar, find the last occurrence of the value 6. So if you recall from when we defined our array we have two sixes in here at position one and position four and so we're going to uh, it's going to return back which of the indexes are the last one for the value six let's go ahead and save this and build it and I'll open up my trusty command window and type in array VB which is the name of my application and you'll know the find the index of 12 is at the third position so let's go ahead and take a look and see if that's true so we were looking for number 12 and indeed it's at the third position and then we were looking for the last occurrence of the number 6 and it says it's at the fourth position and indeed that is true as well so this might look a little confusing uh, I apologize in order to fit everything within the viewable area I decided to use the visual basic line continuation character which allows me to put things on multiple lines but it's still, still treated as one line of code so I apologize if that throws you off a little bit um, what you can simply do is uh, when you get this code yourself just delete those and put them all on one line if that makes things easier for you to read So now I want to demonstrate how to use a multi-dimensional array. Multi-dimensional arrays allow you to create um, uh, elements that have multiple indexers. So for in this example, I've created 
a AR multi that has 1 and 2 and that 1 represents 0 and 1 as one dimension and then 2 are the elements in the second dimension 0 1 2 0 1 2 so when you combine them all together you have six total elements at position 0 0 0 1 0 2 1 0 1 1 and 1 2 and the number of dimensions that you have within an array uh, can be um, can be determined by using the rank so you don't have to have just two we could have added an additional dimension and we can use the rank property of the array to determine how many dimensions are in that array also we can find the uh, the given size of a specific dimension not by using the length property as we did earlier but but by using the get length which is another version of it that allows us to pass in uh, which dimension we want to determine the length of or the or the number of elements of we took a look at lower bound last time uh, this time we're using upper bound so show me the highest number uh, what is the last value within the length and also like we used before the lower bound and then we'll also use the get type that will tell us what data type is our dimension composed is our array rather composed of so let's go ahead and save this and then build it and then use our command window and run it again so this time there are some new things um, I see here that I've forgotten a little spacing character but it put here that the rank is two so there's two dimensions in our array that the length of the second element is three so there are three elements zero one and two and the upper bound for the second element is two and the lower bound of the second element is zero so zero one two and then the type of the array is system.int32 and this indicates that it is an array. So now let's continue on. We've dealt with just a single dimension array here at the top with integers and a multi-dimensional array with integers. But let's move on. I want to use actual objects, actual classes and so I've pasted in the definition of the car class which we'll use for a lot of the examples from here on out and it has three public fields make model and year and then also I've created a constructor so that when I create a new instance of car I can just pass in the make model and year and have those properties mapped up to the appropriate field So let me paste some more code in here at the end of our um, sub-main. And we'll go through that. So I've created a new array, an array of cars, that has three elements, 0, 1, and 2. And this is an array of cars, of car objects. So I'm going to create a series of car objects and on their uh, constructor is going to pass in the, uh, the uh, make and the model and the year. So I've done this for the Toyota and the, for the Ford and you'll notice here I have accessed a specific value within the array and set it equal to an instance of our car objects and in this case I did something a little bit different where I Access the last element of the array and passed in a new instance of the car object passing in Chevy Trailblazer 2001. So this short example will show how to access um, access a specific car within uh, my array by using the get value and I pass in uh, the number two so I want the uh, the second index of my 
AR cars. I'm going to grab that and put that into an instance called OCAR. Then I'm going to need to change some of my code here. So I'm going to put OCAR1. Dot model and OCAR1 dot year. So we'll print that out. So this is one way that I can uh, use an indexer to grab a specific item within my array. Let's go ahead and save this and build it. And I want you to know that there's a lot of different ways to do what I'm doing right here. I chose to use the get value uh, method, but there's also other ways to do this as well. So we were just attempting to create a new uh, array of cars and then to print out one of those cars and what we've got here at the very bottom of our printout is the car at index 2 is Chevy Trailblazer 2001. So let's go ahead and extend this. So now I'm going to paste in some more code and I'm going to show how to loop through two methods of looping through your arrays. In this first case what I'm going to do is very similar to what I did here. I'm going to use a, in the previous one. I'm going to use a for each statement and I've uh, uh, created a, an object called OCAR so I've already dimmed that and that will be uh, what each item within our AR cars co uh, co array collection will be placed into so that I can access the make, the model, and the year and print those out. I've shown a, shown a second example of how to do this as well um, using an indexer based loop. So I've created an integer i and I said for i equals 0 to the number of cars in my array minus 1 so that I can make it 0 based. And I loop through each one so AR cars 1, AR cars 2, AR cars 0, not in that order. Um, and then I can access each of the properties of the current AR cars that's being referred to by this indexer property. So let's go ahead and save that and build it. And then try this again. And as we would expect, that our two loops are identical. Um, just the formatting might be a little bit different but the order is exactly the same because we've essentially gone through each of the items one by one. This tells us that the order that we uh, that they're saved internally is the same order as what we have added them into the array in the first place. And while this is true of uh, collections that implement the iList interface, this is not true of col necessarily true of the collections that um, are based on iDictionary. And so quickly I'm going to show three more things that you can do with our array. We'll demonstrate how to reverse the cars, reverse their order, and then print them out. And then I'm going to show how to clone and make a copy of the cars so that we are dealing with something called AR copy instead of AR cars just to demonstrate that we can deal with a a cloned copy of the original array. Uh, also what I'll do is use the set value function to overwrite one of the items within my copy collection and um, we'll see what that prints out and then finally I'll uncomment this code and we will um, we'll run that. So let's run this twice. We'll run it with um, the reverse and with the cloning and the set value and then I'll uncomment it out and run the clear and show you what happens when there's no elements in the array and we try to loop through them. So let's go ahead and build solution and then let's run it again. Alright, this time notice that when we go in reverse that the trailblazer, which was last in the previous examples is now first. The excursion's in the same spot because we only have three items and the sequoia which is uh, last here was actually first. So it indeed has done a reverse of 
uh, what's in the collection. Now it's stored that way currently. We would have to uh, reverse it back in order to get it into the original format. The next thing we notice is that we've overwritten the first element and then we loop through and display them again so that the item that was oh, I'm sorry let's take a look at our code real quick I think I changed something and didn't change the text yeah we are um, setting the value of 2 which is the last item within our array so even though this says first element that's just because that's an artifact of a previous example what happened here was this used to be Toyota Sequoia but we overwrote it using the set value passing in the OCAR object and overwriting the second element so finally let's just uncomment this out save it and build it and let's notice what happens this time so with our clear method we're passing in our array we're also passing in where to start and how many to uh, uh, the length or the number of items to actually clear out and we're just going to clear out everything and build it and run it again and notice that we get our just-in-time debugger let's go ahead and select no for this and we get a null reference exception and the reason for this is because we have cleared out the objects that are at position 0, 1, and 2 and as a result of doing that we've essentially tried to access a nulled reference within our collection and you can't do that we could have even changed this to uh, to 1 and 1 let's go ahead and save this and build it again and then let's just try to run it so it'll break and what happens is because the second item now item 1 is no longer exists uh, it dies on that line see we made it to one of the items but we didn't make it past there so we've covered a lot of ground in this look at arrays and a lot of this information is foundational we're gonna see the clear method used on a lot of the different collections in the future we're gonna see rever reverse used we're gonna see length and things like um, uh, the for each looping through collections and uh, the getting value and setting value and so we're not going to go through all these properties for every single one of the the different collection types uh, so this one's probably going to be a longer video than the than the remaining videos um, since we had some foundational work to do but I hope that this was very informative uh, that you learned a lot about arrays and about the properties that collections have in common thank you